بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Inspire 2015talk about backbiting, ghiba. What's ghiba? Anybody knows what's ghiba? What's backbiting? Bismillah. Backbiting. Go for it. Excellent. Excellent. So he says saying something about the people behind their backs. But there's one word you have to add to this. One word. Saying something behind the people's back which they do not like. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said the following, ذِكْرُكَ أَخَاكَ بِمَا يَكْرَهَ Mentioning something about your brother or sister in a way they do not like. So that's a criteria that you have to have. Now, you're sitting in a gathering. It's very frequent, especially nowadays, that backbiting is very light and easy. Backbiting is like the dessert of every gathering. And it gets boring if we don't talk about other people who are not present. As a believer, the one who seeks Allah's judgment, if you're sitting down and someone talks bad about your brother, you have to do something about it. You cannot say, I don't want to tell them, please not talk about it. I want to move away. No, because I fear my friends will make fun of me. I'm a boring person. They will never befriend me. A'udhu billah. At this point, you seek Allah over them. Is it clear? You, now, how do you do that? You need some motivation. You guys drink Red Bull? Okay. Now, we have some our Red Bulls, which is knowing the reward of things and knowing the punishment of things. And that's how we both uh, are influenced. So for example, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, every time, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, every time, every time, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wallahi, it's enough of a benefit. If you say 10, 15 times in this lecture, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that's enough of a benefit. You guys agree? So continuously saying it whenever you hear that beautiful name. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that the one who you back bit in dunya, this is Hassan hadith, will be brought to you yawm al-qiyamah. And Allah will be telling that person, Kulhu, Kulhu mayita kama akaltahu hayya, eat them dead just like how he ate them when they were alive. In Yawm al Qiyamah, will we have an option to say, No, I won't, I will not? Do we have an option? No. So the Prophet says, The body will be right in front of you. Fayakulhu, wa yaklah, wa yasih. You will be forced to literally eat that body. What's al kuluh? When the upper lip reaches the middle of the head and the lower lip reaches the middle of the chest, and you will literally be like an anaconda swallowing that body. That's an example of the punishment. Allah mentioned in the Quran, in Surah Al Hujarat, Isn't it right? Would you love for you to eat the flesh of your brother? Allah responds, You would not like it. Allah knows. People will be discussing, is this halal meat or is this haram meat, right? Is this the biha? So they go to McDonald's, they're like, Akhi, this halal sign is fake, I'm telling you, right? It's fake. Akhi, no, no, I'm telling you it's halal. Back and forth, no, I will order fish, I will order chicken. Okay, whatever, you order what you want, you order what you want. Then we go on the dinner table. You know what happens? They eat human beings' flesh with no difference of opinion. By talking ill about other people. But at this point, what should you do? The one who don't worry about their judgment at this point. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in an authentic narration, مَنْ ذَبَّ عَنْ عِرْضِ أَخِيهِ Wallah, this is remarkable. Whoever defends the honor of their brother or sister. Someone tells you, brother so-and-so is stingy. You're like, no, he is generous. Such behavior. You know what's a reward when you defend your brother? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, أَعْتَقَهُ اللَّهُ مِنَ النَّارِ this is one of the greatest rewards you will ever be blessed with in your life. What does that mean? Allah. That means their neck is unleashed from hellfire. Even before Islam came. And you have to understand that term because it's mentioned in many other ahadith. For example, in Ramadan, the Prophet wasallam says, Brother, translate. I will. The Prophet says, every night Allah has utaqa from hellfire and he chooses them every night. May Allah free our necks from hellfire. Say Ameen. Ameen Rabbil Alameen. You know what does that mean? Back in Jahiliyyah, when they free a slave, can the master ever say, no, come back, you're a slave again? Can they do that? Can they retract their statement? Impossible. So now go to what Allah and the Prophet said. When Allah unleashes your neck for that one incident, 
that means you will never enter hellfire. Someone will say, but what if I was a kafir after that, right? Allah will adjust your life in a way that you won't die in such state because of an, a sincere moment where you defended your brother and sister. These are moments if you care about Allah's judgment, look how honorable you will be in Allah's sight. May Allah make us strong. Say, I mean, I mean, Rabbil Alameen. But you have to be very wise. I know when it comes to parents, it's very difficult. You know, your mom tells you, your brother is driving me crazy. Your brother, like, Mama, that's ghiba, ittaqillah. No, don't do that with your mother, okay? Because now you might be doing a bigger sin than other sin. May Allah protect us. Say, I mean, I mean, Rabbil Alameen. So there's something to truly appreciate. One time I was driving, and there was a brother. He's like, do you know what brother so and so did? I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm like, don't continue, akhi. He's like, bro, but it's a fact. I'm like, it doesn't matter if it's a fact. It does not change the law. Because the Prophet says, mentioning your brother in a way they do not like, correct? The Sahaba said, Ya Rasulullah, what if what we're saying is true? That guy is stingy. That guy is a coward. He says, that's ghibah. And if what you say is not true, then that's extreme oppression. So it doesn't make any difference. Some will say, well, I will say it in his face. It doesn't make any difference. It's still backbiting. So I told the brother, please don't continue. He's like, Akhi, but I saw him with the other person. I'm like, Akhi, please stop. And then the thing is that the other guy is, is difficult to praise. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I cannot say, well, no, he's a modest man. Because generally what we see is not the best. But still, that does not allow you to talk ill about him. He continues. I'm like, Wallahi al-Azim. If you continue, Wallahi, I will stop in the middle of the road and drop you. He's like, ah, whatever, you are not going to do it. I'm like, if you continue, I'm going to drop you in the middle of the street. He's like, okay, whatever. You know what the brother did? I'm like, ah, stop it, get out. He's like, are you serious? I'm like, dead serious, you leave the car. He's like, bro, are you seriously going to do this? I'm like, yes, I'm seriously going to do this. I said, like, okay, sure. May Allah make us always strong. Because maybe one day I pass, the other day I fail. But I'm not going to mention a day I fail to you guys, right? I'm going to mention the good stuff. Sorry. So the point being, he opened the door, left the car, and I looked him in the mirror, and then I just drove off. And he was looking small and small and small in the mirror, and he's gone. But after that, he never opened up a topic like that. May Allah give us the reward of doing that. Amir Rabbil Alameen. Well, it's just a, a something that we can appreciate. When you have people's judgment, he might not like me anymore. He might judge me as like, oh, you're a boring person, you're extreme, you're so paranoid, you're so picky. Mention whatever you want to mention. But there's something to truly appreciate. <laughs>